Right, peace and black power family, peace and black power. Peace and black power family, peace and black power. Y'all already know what it is, man. Um, I got Jabari in the building today. Y'all see what the topic is dealing with. Uh, the comedic concept of the virgin. That's what you wanted to say, Jabari? You ain't want to put birth behind it? You just wanted to put virgin? It it should have virgin birth. Virgin okay, well, birth. When you yeah. text me the title, it just said virgin. Go look oh, at the title. I missed it out. Yeah, so you can't say I'm messing up, bro. <laughs> Go look just at add it. it. Add it. I, add it. I got you. I got you. I'm gonna do it right now. But anyway, talk to me, man. How do you feel after that uh that uh debate with uh you and Dr. Richard Carrier? How are you feeling about that? Have you got any calls from your people? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, people have been texting, calling, all sorts of folks um, have responded. Um, and I, I want to say that um, I believe that Dr. Richard Carrier is a scholar that uh, has done enough work and, and has enough experience that it really should be a really good debate. Right? I was looking forward to debating him on these topics. But I'm going to say to you that it's, you know, um, it's tough when... Uh, that scholar doesn't respect the audience, doesn't respect the community he's speaking to. And I really feel that that's what was happening. He didn't respect us enough. Um, and so that's frustrating to me. It's always good to get a win. And I think if anyone was watching, um, they should recognize that he did not prevail. Um, in fact, the poll was pretty clear that most of the folks that were in the um, in the building also believe that he did not prevail. But, you know, I, I, I part of what I want to start this conversation with, Sonetta, is some of the clean cleaning that we have to do mm -hmm. within our community. Yeah. Um, because it really, when you take the 30,000 foot view of what has happened over the course of the neck of the last um you know few like moments. 10 videos made, uh, um, at you a little bit from hating, not 10 people, but it was some supporting you. So was, a, yeah. Dozens I, of videos. Some folks went live for like five to six hours. I mean, we're talking about an extensive, extensive discussion around this. <laughs> so, you know, and yeah. some of it is just ridiculous. You know, we, I, I kind of expect that some of what people will say is ridiculous, but you know, we have to get to the point where we're better than this. And right. I don't think that we are necessarily there yet. If anything, this discussion has um, really isolated and highlighted some of the issues that we have. And so I want to start there to some degree um, with some of the issues that we have, some of the challenges that we have. Um, I want to start by saying recognize why this discussion let me say this before you start Jabari. go ahead go ahead you had some pretty good streams of the people making videos about you and here's one right here i was loving the cover i'm gonna show you the cover of it i was like yo i like this cover i might want to take this and put it on my channel <laughs> <laughs> all right merry christmas from the shrine of my aunt, Jabari the Stone Christmas, man. <laughs> so that was crazy. In this other video, he was talking good how you came in and stole Christmas from Garfield and Unc and all of So that was a good one. That's uh, the brother Chief Friend. Chief right. Friend um, video. Right. Notice it's almost five hours, Sonetta. Yeah. The amount of content that people have generated based on that debate. Come on, man. It's crazy. Come on, man. Now, so what does that say about me, man? They talk about me, but they use as my material. They use my work all over, bro. And they talk Listen. about us over here on the House of Consciousness like, like our people don't do research. That's what my man Revelation yes. was mad about. Yes. 
Like, come on, man, but they use our work, my work over here all the time. If you don't like me, why use? If I don't like somebody, I'm not going to use their stuff. I'm not even going to watch them. I'm not doing none of that. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to pass it. Is, it's, really, it's really interesting because, I, you know, Garfield's stream, I think, was at least six hours, if not longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about almost full work days, people. Do it. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a full work day, son. That is like, yeah. man. And um, some of it is just them trying to clean up the mess that they've started with other obfusc obfuscation and prestidigitation and confusion. But some of it, people were saying, look, I, I, this was a good debate, but uh, amazing that this it occurred this way. Um, somebody said that his his stream is what it was eight hours. Damn, it was eight hours. Confirm that for me. It was eight hours really? I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Let, and and you know part of this is this, son. Editor. How did this come about? How did this come about? Essentially, one of the people Garfield Reed in this community that really doesn't like me. That really, I would me say, neither, Jabari, he don't like me neither. Well, he, that's, he that's, believe he do, but he don't, brother. Trust me. Yeah, but but his hatred of me is different than his hatred of you. I got you. Y'all be beefing, and Sonetta, I wouldn't even be surprised if a year from now y'all are talking. That's different than how he he uh, where he holds me. Yeah, right. That's different. He's called me a cult leader. He's compared me to people who are abusing women and taking advantage of people. He's even just this weekend, he said that I'm a hotel hustler. I'm running a scam. Damn. You know, he said things about my re reproductive health, Ooh. said things about my wife. I mean, the stuff that he's done is crazy. And so let's be clear that he hired Richard Carrier, he hired a PhD biblical scholar. What did he do? He purchased one of my lectures under false pretenses, by the way, but that's fine. You gave me the money. Thank you very much. Sent it to him, paid him. Richard Carrier acknowledged this. And I was so glad I got him on the record saying this. He paid him to critique my work. And then he paid him again to come on to speak ill of me. Call me a neo-pagan. Richard Carey is pretty much, pretty really close to calling me a black extremist. Those are the things that have happened. And so we knew that he, he thought he was sending a missile towards Jabari Osaze and by extension to San Netter. And I, and I really bided my time. Now listen, the, the amount of hours that these folks who hate me have spent talking about me, I owe them some really serious cash on that are because I have been occupying a place in their heads and I have been doing it rent-free for years. Rent-free. I rarely respond to them when they're saying negative things about me. I know what they've said. People send me the, the clips, the links. I rarely respond. So one of the problems that we have, Sonnetter, is and and I'm going I'm to say this to my brother, Sonnetta. Before we went live, I said, Sonnetta, you can't talk like that. He, 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 the Sonnetta flipped out a little while ago, too. I was yeah. wondering. Yeah, Jabari said that. He, he, told told me that. he told me that. What are we building this for? Yeah. What have you done this, this whole platform that you've built? Mm -hmm. Is it not to educate and teach our people? So, Netter, it can't just be about information. It has to be about the way we speak to each other, the way we try to deal with each other when we have disagreements. And one of the things that is always is that I have watched Garfield speak to dozens of Tamu, of European, of white scholars. And when he does it, he's polite, he's genial. When he disagrees with them, he disagrees with them in a very polite manner. But when it comes to me, he calls me the N-word regularly. He curses me out. He yells, he screams. He would never do that to a white scholar. Never. I've never seen him have a crossword with them. And it's so bizarre to me 
that this is what continues to happen. Just yesterday when you called um, and I was at dinner with my family, I said, you know, listen, we could have just had a disagreement. Is it possible we just uh, we could have just had a discussion. Is it possible that we just have a disagreement? Do we just have a disagreement? Can't we just disagree and have a conversation? But no, he starts saying, you're lying to the people. If what you are saying is correct and what am I and what I am saying is wrong, let's have a conversation. And does not have to have all this animosity. That kind of stuff is the stuff that happened in the streets. And I know y'all see a bald-headed, light-skinned brother with glasses, and you think, well, I'm not for that life. I used to be. I don't do that anymore. I am here to educate and teach our people to engage in better conversations. Why must it seem like it's the worst possible discussion that I would seen among two people that are drunk on the corner. We have to change the coarseness of this dialogue. This is really important, Sonetta. It's really important. Go ahead. Take it, brother. And I really have to say that we, if we're teaching, listen, you know, I also work with young people a lot and people who work with young people. Do you know there are people who watch your channel, Sonnetter, and say, I wish my students could hear this conversation, but I can't because of the profanity? You have to remember that there's a whole audience out there that needs to hear this. You have to change. I'm not even talking about them. They got other problems. Because I understand where your heart is and I know what you're trying to do, son, Edder. Don't let them pull you off your square. I was heated today. You're right, brother. Yeah, but be you're heated right. agree on your you. own. Uh, listen, I'm you don't think I get heated? Sorry, why you ain't called me and said, son, Edder, don't do it. Don't stop, man. You act like I haven't done that before. Stop it. Yeah, but this time you didn't. <laughs> you should have said, son, don't do it. Just let it go. Don't I kept do it. thinking you were going to stop and you kept going for a little bit. I was like, why? Yeah. Why? We have to get better at this. Because when we talk like that, do you think that you would have seen Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, even those uh, elders who are still with us, Dr. Jeffries, Professor Small, do you think that they would engage in that kind of dialogue? Are we actually now, doing hold on now, Bobby. Do now, hold on now. Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark and a lot of them, they got into some heated conversations. It wasn't no stream at that time. It wasn't no uh, YouTube at that time now. Sonetta, talk to you Sonetta, about these are two people I knew very well. They would not have those kinds of conversations in public with a thousand people watching. No, not in public. I'm not saying they did it in public. Right. So yeah. why are we doing it? So why are we doing it? So why, listen, I've been cursed out by both of them, personally. I'm telling you that's not something they did in public. If they thought they needed to talk to me, we got to do it better. And I see one person saying they pissed Sa off, George Do Dozier. Yes, but you know what? Part of what we have to do is learn how to handle it differently. You don't think they piss me off? Look at the stuff they say about me regularly. <laughs> You don't think I get pissed off about what they say? But you have to handle it differently. And there's another thing. You can show hot fire and anger without taking it all the way out to the worst possible things that you're one right. black man or one oh, black woman can say. Right, brother. I'm yeah, and, I'm, and that's just not just for you. I'm talking about what they do. Because mm -hmm. they do it on a regular. On a regular. So... That's the challenge that that we have to that we have to do. We need some, to do some cleaning. And part of the reason why it's so ugly right now is because somebody sent a hitman. By the way, you should know he even put up videos. Jabari is um yes, Smash says I get slapped in those videos. Yes, you get smashed and slapped. Listen, they used to speak nice with you. But once you say, "Well, I don't agree with them on this topic." Now all of a sudden, they talk about you like they would talk about someone in the street. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I've always said that Smash Rockwell is a straight shooter. He, if he disagrees with me, he will say, this is why I disagree with him. And give a reasoned no, articulate. But, but he's only a, a straight shooter with um them. He's not a straight shooter with us, Scott, um, Brother Jamari. Who? Garfield. Garfield. No, no, not I'm not talking about Garfield. I'm not talking about Garfield. I'm talking about Smash Rockwell is a straight shooter. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. He, Smash, Smash has not always agreed with me. Mm -hmm, that's true. I don't take it. I, this is the kind of conversation we're supposed to have. I disagree with him because of this. Not because he's he's scamming people, he's abusing people, he's a cult leader. What are you doing? If you actually search for me, Jabari Osaze, I probably have the longest history on, 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 uh, on the internet than anyone. You're going to find older stuff about me and what I was doing than they find of Sean Netter. You're going to see articles and things written about me in the early 90s. Jabari, do it hurt when you bite your tongue, though? No. What? The, what? It hurts when you bite your tongue. You never bit your tongue before? You talking about a real bite on my tongue? Yes, I'm talking about a real that's, bite on your tongue. That's not what I'm talking about. That's what I'm, I'm saying. saying. Have, it, have you ever... <laughs> do it hurt when you bite your tongue? Of course. Oh, God damn it, I bit my tongue so many times. I know, I know. So what you have to do is say, listen, especially when we're on the fifth floor, you're on the sixth floor now, Sonetta. Uh-huh, yeah. We got to do it differently. We got to do it differently. And I'm not talking... This is not... Mostly to chastise you. I'm talking about how they treat me. Because Sonetta has a few different speeds. I wish that he wouldn't go to some of those speeds. <laughs> but Sonetta has a few different speeds. Some of them don't. The only time they show the different speed is when they're talking to white people. What is going on? You hired someone to, uh, to look at my work and critique me during Black History Month. And I'm not just saying it's Black History Month because it happened to be February. You said you want to do something different for Black History Month. Mm -hmm. This was your focus. And then he's even had videos recently saying um, Jabari Osazi is afraid of Richard Carrier. Look on his channel. You'll see that he said that he had a whole video talking about that. Why would I be afraid to engage in intellectual dialogue and discourse? I enjoy that. Win or lose, it's supposed to make me stronger, better. But that's what happens. And some of them do a Google search on some stuff and think that they can fight with me on stuff. That's not even a good look for them. I've been studying this for so long, Sonetta. I've forgotten more stuff than they have learned. You hear what I said? Mm -hmm. I've forgotten more stuff than they have learned. You can't just do a Google search and think you're going to come on here and defeat me. At least what you can do is say, this is what I found. Is Jabari wrong? I think you're wrong, Jabari. But what is with this? You're lying. I'm exposing the truth. You just looked at this on last Wednesday. How do you know? Never been anywhere. So we have to do better. We have to do better. And let me show you something. Let's let's let's. Um, get into the discussion a little bit because I really want to um, talk about some of what we've heard. And of course, I'm sure Anka is going to be mad because I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show, play some video of what he said. He's going to have to be mad. I disagree with him. Yeah, I, I disagree with him. Um, and it's really important for us to understand why what has been said after this debate is so damaging. Now, you know, listen, let's be clear. Reggie and I, Reggie and I have been beefing and arguing with each other since before Sonnetta TV Studios existed. We have been beefing with each other when Dr. Ben was still alive, when Dr. Clark was still alive. Now, I think that there has been, sometimes there's a coarseness in our discourse that didn't exist before. And I'm going to honestly say, I'm going to be vulnerable for a second and say, that bothers me. Because in those days when I was beefing with, with, with Reggie, I considered him a friend. I don't know where we are these days. I don't know where we are. But I'm going to honestly say I consider him a friend. 
Even when we were arguing, we were arguing over information. He would show some stuff. I would show some stuff. One time he was so sure that I was wrong. He left 125th Street and came and slid some sources, sources under my door and said, this is why you're wrong, Jabari. Sources. That, and, and Reggie will remember that because you know he remembered walking from 125th Street to my house. And, and put sources in my, at my house said, this is why you're wrong. That's a, that's a helpful conversation. That is a relationship that scholars have to have. It's gone awry a little bit in recent years, but that, that kind of discourse is healthy. It's healthy, you don't have to agree with me on everything. Nor do I have to agree with you on everything, but show your, give a sense of what your argument is. We're now hearing that one person don't need to show sources. That's what we're hearing. I'm going to play this clip, Sonnetta, of what um, Ankh said. And this is not in animosity. It's not in anger. It's just we need to show it again and but say, what is happening? Bro, God, Jabari. Yes. Um, for, one, for one, man, don't feel guilty Unk been on that Garfield channel all day talking about you, bro. Right, right. Talking about you and all of that. So come on, man. You you ain't you ain't banging on them. You teaching right now. You ain't talking to them the way they talk about you. You're teaching. I have never talked about them the way they talk about me. Right. Ever. Ever. I mean, you know, and, and I won't. I just won't do that. So, I mean, that's the challenge. But take a look at what he said immediately after the debate with regard to Richard Carey and how he behaved. And I want to want to show this because I, 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 it's going to set the stage for some of the conversation we have to have. L please l listen to this. And Sanada, let me know if you can hear it when it starts, okay? Everybody go on mute. Yeah, we can hear it. We can hear it. Yeah, so I don't, um, well, I was in there for myself, so I seen it. Um, I, I heard Jabari over and over again say that uh, Carrier didn't bring any sources when at the beginning of the um, the, the, the debate, uh, he provided his, his text that he could actually be using. I think it was three to four of them. And he also provided a blog uh, on his website that we go to uh, with the sources. So he actually did provide the sources. And he explained why he did it that way. So I was kind of like, okay. What I did, did I, I, I always heard how the conscious community put the whole Christianity thing together. But for the first time, I actually heard how experts put it together. And it was based on chronology. It was based on understanding other cultures. And he clearly showed how certain things came from Persia, right? I know I've talked about Zoroaster resume and things of that nature. And I think he put it together in chronological order. He also talked about two types of Christianity. He talked about the origin of Christianity, like the origin of Christianity. And then he talked about the Christianity that was going around destroying cultures and stuff like that. Clearly two separate things. I had never heard that put that way. So, I, you know, I suggest when, when Sonna to run that debate back again, y'all go ahead and clear your mind and hear what both sides actually had to say. Now, for me, I felt like it was a great conversation. But for the first time, I actually heard the shit put together like it should have been put together. So I appreciate uh, Jabari's uh, uh, premise, right? But I, uh, uh, I actually really learned something from what Curry said, because in actuality, that's how you really supposed to put it together. He stayed in chronological order. He didn't jump back and forth. And it was very, very clear to me. Now, you may say I'm hating, but I, but my ear, I got a pretty good ear, right? And I appreciate that. Appreciate okay, the concept. So it was a good one. So uh, who are you saying won the debate? Well, I, I don't even necessarily like the one and lost thing. Who would you give it to? Who would you give it I, to? I, I, I would say that Kerry was very clear. But I mean, he didn't jump. Like in the conscious team, we jump a lot. He didn't jump. He kept everything very, very concise. Things we hadn't heard before, right? So so I would say whose conversation was, was clear and to the point and in a chronological order. It would have had to been carry for me. We all, well, I've heard Jabari. I, I've heard the conscious community smear on how Christianity came from that. But I had never heard 
somebody actually put it together where the chronology match. I had never heard imperial Christianity as opposed to the original Christianity. I had never heard somebody say, but wait a minute. He says, the people that was uh, formed Christianity, they would have got out of Judaism. You know what I'm saying? Like, the things, it made sense. If You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't just jump from one time period to another, from one culture to another. You know what I'm saying? He, you know what I mean? It, it was a great, matter of fact, Y'all should have bought them goddamn tickets. That was a great ass conversation right yeah, there. That was, that I'm was just saying, I learned something. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was, was, you know what I mean? Yeah, so for me, right, I, I would give it to Kanye, but I don't think people will be able to, to, to actually connect because we're so invested in the conscious community that you, that, that you probably couldn't hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I know Garfield could hear it, right? Reggie should have heard it, but I seen Reggie say, the man didn't bring sources. He clearly explained what his sources was and what he was using. Well, at the beginning of the film, he put up four texts. He put up three saying, these are my sources. I, I really want you to hear that. I really want you to hear that. But before I speak more about what he said, I want you to listen to what he said to Ali Muhammad concerning sources. Ali Muhammad is trying to source an argument. What does um, Ankh say to him about his source? I want you to look at this for a second. Take a look. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What does it say? Right here, look at the source. D. Garrigan, S. B. Kingan, M. M. Uh, Pilkington, uh, J.A. Wilder and M.P. Cox, inferring human population sizes, divergence times, and rates of gene flow from mitochondrial X and Y chromosome sequencing. And what does it say? Oh, my God. A resequencing of 3,873 genes and 150 feet chromosomes from European, Latino, Hispanic, Asian and African American populations observed that African Americans have the highest percentage of rare single nucleotide polymorphisms. They call it genetic diversity, SMPs, 64%, and the lowest percentage of common SMPs, 36%. So now they're telling you after they tested these people the diverging differences between these groups. And what I'm saying to you is we can go. Okay. I don't have a date for it, but screenshot this source right here. Come in, man. Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. Don't, hey, don't break my laptop. Oh, you want this or this? I want this. No, 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 stop. Don't break my focus right now. Go ahead. I, I got to focus. Hey, hold on. Give me this. Give me this. Give me that mic. All right, you're going to get it back. I promise you, real quick. I'm excited. Come on, man. The Unrust Squad is Yo, what is this? What is that? Hold on. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, I, la you wrote, la it. guess what he just did? This nigga just gave me his book. Man, oh, take this shit out of here. Who is this? Who is that? You wrote that? You wrote that? Get the hell out of here. Oh, hey, hey, bro. They gotta this nigga go through his book. Get this back right here. Go back. Come here. Hey, get his back. Get his back. Hey, no. Come here, man. Come here, man. Hold on. For the record, bring nine specialists. Talk to a specialist. Bring Ngozi, bring the team Osiris. Do not send Um to talk about genetics. Send Um to talk about Flint. Send Um to talk about Black African power. Send Um to talk about Black atheists. Do not send Um to talk about genetics. He just told you that we're 99. Let's see. Let's give him. Let's give him. Hey, you see that dancing? This shit is crazy. I'm gonna sit back real easy, like. This reference he used was his goddamn book. So back to that nigga again. Don't give me your book. I'm going to the Journal of Science right here, the Journal of Nature. And we're going to talk about that A double zero, right? Okay? Please. Let's be clear. They know what sources are. Now, all of a sudden, there's like there's some confusion about what a source is. Look at how he treated Ali Muhammad. By the way, Ali Muhammad was not just reading what he wrote. He was reading what he wrote based on a source which he tried to provide. I don't think he did it greatly, but he was trying to give a source. Ankh refused to receive that source because it came from his book. And 
at least Ali was showing something that he had actually written. Richard Carrier showed the covers of the book. Damn. The covers. And that was good enough for him. What is going on here? What, is there some kind of white PhD handicap going on? Mm, mm, mm. This is dangerous, and I'm going to speak more about it in a minute. This is very dangerous. We have to do better. By the way, I want you to know, you already know this, I read Richard Carrier's 700-page book. And as I've said, it was a good, it's a good book. Richard Carrier has one paragraph with regard to analyzing Kemet and Christianity. One. Guess which book has even more on this? Guess which book has more on Christianity and Kemet? Your book, Jabari. My book has an entire chapter, an entire chapter on this. In fact, it's really parts of two chapters. You're going to see a chapter on um, ancient Africa. Uh, wait, let me read the title. The ancient Egyptians were, a Cauc were a Caucasian, first of all. That deals with the topic. And you'll also see the Hebrew slaves built the pyramids. You're going to see lots of information. I'm talking about dozens of pages with regard to this information in my book. Could I have just said, this is in my book? They wouldn't have accepted that. Nor should they. I mean, obviously, if I've written a book and I've dealt with some of these ideas, that means that I should have sources in my book. We'll show the sources then. Describe the sources that made you make the argument. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You don't show a cover of a book. That's what he did. And let's be clear about this. Ankh says that he appreciates how Carrier put his argument together. He wasn't jumping all over the place. If you don't have sources, you haven't really put an argument together. He wasn't jumping all over the place. Of course he wasn't jumping all over the place because he didn't show any sources. He just was doing a narrative. This is where it comes from. No proof. No deeper argument. He seems to argue, by the way, this is contradictory from what he heard, what he said before. He argues that the early Christians got many of the ideas that are in the Kemetic tradition from the Persians. That was the argument that he made, that the, the Christians got this from the Persians. And he showed some graphs on the screen that he made. Why are we doing that? Where's the source? How do we how do we acknowledge that what you've said is correct or incorrect? Jabari, can I community? Jabari, can I show you something real quick? It's only like about ahead, a minute. Go I'm, ahead. Gonna you, I'm gonna show you where where Dr. Richard Carrier debunked Unc and Garfield in the mm. debates you had with him. Mm. He disagreed with Unc and and um Garfield. I know exactly what you're about to play. Go ahead, do it. All right, let me show you right quick. Here you go. Listen. Always check these sources. Uh, always look into this. Uh, and if you if I say something in this debate uh, that you don't know where I got the idea from. <laughs> See, he said, always check these sources. Always check the sources. But, you know, but here's the deal, Sonnetter. He put four of his own books on the screen. One of them compares... Um, Jesus to Homer and Hitler. What does that have to do with the topic? The, the, his magnum opus, his most important book is this one. It doesn't cover the topic. There are no sources uh, for what he's arguing in here. But even then, even if it was chock full of sources, you have to actually show them. You have to show them. If he did this in front of other PhDs, other college students, high school students, he would be banged on it. What he did is not enough. And that's the problem. That's the problem. 
Um, the other thing that I hear our Ankh and others say is that they're talking about, well, before I do that, more on sources. Let me show you this. Show this, Sonetta, please. Please show this. So what do we mean about sources? Some people are saying, well, we should have been clear with him that there was a need for sources. What? He is a PhD scholar. That is what they do. How many sources does he have in his book? I want you to see how many sources he has in this book. This, I'm gonna just go to his bibliography. His bibliography starts on page 619 and it ends on page 680. Richard Carrier knows what a source is. He did not respect this community enough to display his sources. He thought that he was the expert. And I told you he was going to do that. I'm the expert. I'm the expert. So I don't need to tell y'all nothing. Just believe me. Why? Because I said it. That's what he did. And I told you he was going to do that. Here's the slide that I put up. Let me show this real quick. This is what I said he was going to do. Before he started speaking, I said, here is Richard Carrier's game plan. Politely frame me as a novice or amateur. By the way, you might notice if you've seen the debate, and you definitely, if you haven't seen it, you better go see it on, on sa Saturday. Yes, sir. <laughs> he says, he continually, he says stuff without any sources, without any argumentation. When I say something, he goes, you need to show me this source. You need to show me this. This is what I need. He kept saying that. Yep, I said that. I said he that. He didn't say, in this debate, this is what you need to do. He said, this is what you need to show me. And I said, I can't believe you're asking me to show you anything when you haven't showed one source. Then he said, you can't use any 19th century scholars as sources. I said, that's ridiculous. And I, so I showed, 19th, I showed 18th century scholars, 19th century scholars, 20th century scholars, 21st century scholars. Then he said, oh, these sources are better. And I said, you don't have the right to talk about sources, Richard. You haven't shown us any. Second, situate himself as the expert. Demand that he show sources. I said this before he said anything. I knew he was going to do this. I knew it. Do the majority of scholars agree with him? If he's the expert on this, do scholars agree with him? Because he's saying, I'm the scholar. This is how we do this in scholarship. But the reality is scholars don't agree with his, what he's done. They don't. There's a large range of scholars that say that what he's doing is not scholarly. And I showed some of them in the debate. Then he said that I misrepresented what the scholar said. He didn't show what the scholar said to prove that I misrepresented. He just said it. We're supposed to believe you because you said it. Gloss over 3,000 years of comedic history to make the Greeks and Romans primary. That's what he did. So when they say he was jumping around, Jabari is trying to show you sources of things that happened in time. Richard Carrier didn't even attempt to do that. If I'm talking to you about Kemet being the origin of Christian ideas, I have to show you things that Kemet did thousands of years before the Christians existed, thousands or at least a thousand years in many instances before, the Greek, before Greece and Rome existed. Then I have to come forward and talk about Christianity and its origins. Is that jumping around or is that meeting the task of the debate? What do you mean jumping around? Christianity begins, if you believe this, in the first century BC, uh, in the first century CE. To talk about the Kemetic tradition, you have to go 2,000, 3,000 years earlier. By nature, if you think that's jumping around, you don't understand the topic. Thank you very much. That's what you have to do. So that's the problem. And then the other thing that people do is they talk about original Christianity, which is the most farcical thing that you'll hear them say. But let's talk about sources for a second. I want to just show you this. Take a look at this. This is the National Federation of State High School Associations. 
Sonnetter, the National Federation of State High School Associations, not college, not mm -hmm. collegiate, not doctoral association, high school associations. And this is beyond Google, speech and debate teaches important research skills. Are you reading this? I want you to understand what they are saying. Look at what the first paragraph says. It says, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth, truth is getting, putting its shoes on. A quote is significant because it points out the danger that fake news can travel faster than real news. It also makes a case for accurate attribution. Was it said by Mark Twain, Thomas Jefferson, or maybe Winston Churchill? All have been credited with the statement, which dates to the early 1800s. It was published by several sources without attribution. This is part of the challenge. We have to now show what, how we come up with our arguments. This is from further down in this article, by the way, which was written by Ruth Kay. April 12, 2022. She says, the speech debate classroom, along with, with competitive activities, provide the perfect place to teach research skills, to go beyond Google, which has made research too easy. Googling has become a verb, just Google it. Speech and debate students must go beyond Googling because credibility is a critical aspect of their performances. Preventing, presenting information with quality sources shows the audience that the speaker has done appropriate background work and it improves the credibility of the content. In competitive debate, was this not a competitive debate? In competitive debate, a student's presentation will be judged and challenged by others. Their arguments often hinge on the quality of sources. Speech adjudicators evaluate expert opinions and facts that show the depth in student research. So the use of tools beyond Google is essential for competitor success. This is high school. How dare you question whether he knows he needs to show sources? How could he say, how could you say he didn't know that when he was challenging my sources? If he didn't understand sources were important, why did he say, you can't use these kinds of sources, Jabari? He knows it. He just doesn't respect you enough to show them to you. He sat there and said, I'm the expert. And I want you to ask a question, is he? And in this instance, we hear Ankh and we hear others including Yara and, and I believe Garfield. I believe Garfield says this clearly as well. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but I believe he does. They say, well, you told me he didn't show you sources. He told you where you can find them. Yes, that's where you can find them, supposedly. Those aren't sources. That's where he says his sources are. He has to show them. Imagine if it was as easy enough for me to just sew a cover of a book. This is my book. I deal with this issue more than he does in this book. You didn't see me say, it's just in my book. Now, maybe if you weren't prepared for a discussion or debate, you might say, this is in my book. But this is a debate where we have a very clear title, very clear topic, and it was a debate that was supposed to be prepared for in advance. When you're having a real debate, you don't just say, this is something I think you should know. How about this one? Here's a National Speech and Debate Association. I have used this. This is for LD, PF, and public debate as evidence rules. This is for judges. LD, Lincoln Douglas, PF, public forum. What we did was clearly a public forum. These are the rules for judges. And it even talks about how you can challenge people's sources. Look at this. A debater or a judge asked to see something read or the original source of something read. I continually said, where are your sources? Where are your sources? Prove what you're saying. How can someone say they like how he put something together if they didn't even, he didn't even show you how he put it together? Would you buy a used car because the chassis is attractive? 
Or would you want to open up the hood? Would you want to take it on for a test drive? Would you want to see its service record? I hope you would. You can't just say the sources are in my books and my blog. That's what he did. Not one source. The only thing he sourced, he sourced wrong. <laughs> this is important. Look at this. Uh, the scenario here is also um, a debater questions the written source citation of the, the, of the opponent. Smash already showed this too because Smash is a straight shooter. That's why. That's why. Y'all need to stop saying, did he know he had to show sources? Stop it. If he didn't know, why was he challenging my sources? Of course he knew. By the way, when I'm teaching in front of my students and I'm, and I'm making an argument and telling them something, do I, you know, I don't always have the sources for everything. Guess why I don't always have the sources for everything on my slide when I'm teaching? Because they're already reading the text. I say, this is in this chapter of the text you are reading. But most of my slides have sources on the screen because my students need to know where I got the information from. My students. My students. That's how you assist thinking people. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So um, there's, there's a, another topic here that I think we need to address. People are saying um, the original Christianity was this. That was Richard Carrier's idea. We heard Yara say it. We heard Ankh say it. That's a ridiculous statement to make. He made, he talked about original Christianity and imperial Christianity. That makes no sense. Look at what Bart Ehrman says. By the way, Bart Ehrman and Richard Carrier have debated. In his book, Lost Christianities, The Battles for Scripture and the Faiths We Never Knew, in his introduction, he said, recouping our losses. Recouping our losses. Look at this. It is difficult to imagine a religious phenomenon. I don't know if anyone here can read that. It's kind of small. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Okay. I don't know how, it may be a little blurry, but I'm reading parts of it. Okay. It may be difficult to imagine a religious phenomenon more diverse than modern Christianity. By the way, I'm showing you a source. <laughs> I said that the idea of there being a, an original Christianity is ridiculous. So I'm showing you a source that supports my argument. I do this all the time when I come on here. Most people do when they come on. Anyway, it may be difficult to imagine a religious phenomenon more divorced than modern day Christianity. There are Roman Catholic missionaries in developing countries who devote themselves to voluntary poverty for the sake of others, and evangelical televangelists who run 12-step programs to ensure financial success. There are New England Presbyterians and Appalachian snake handlers. There are Greek Orthodox priests committed to the liturgical service of God, replete with set prayers, incantations. One sec. Incantations, getting a, an important text. Give me one sec. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. There are liberal myth Methodist pro political activists intent on transforming society and Pentecostals. He's going on and on and on and on and on. And then he says, let's go a little bit further down. What could be more diverse than the variegate, this variegated phenomenon? Christianity in the modern world. In fact, there may be an answer. Christianity in the ancient world. 
As historians have come to realize, during the first three Christian centuries, the practice and beliefs found among people who call themselves Christian were so varied that the difference between Roman Catholics, Primitive Baptists, Baptists, and Seventh-day Adventists pale by comparison. Most of these ancient forms of Christianity are unknown in the world to people in the world today, since they eventually came to be reformed or stamped out. I keep telling you to read Jesus Wars. He's another book you should read. As a result, the sacred texts of some ancient Christians used to support the religious perspective became came to be prescribed, destroyed, or forgotten, and in one way, in one way or another, lost. Many of these texts claim to be written by Jesus' closest followers. Did you know that? Opponents of these texts claim they had been forged. This book is about these texts and the lost forms of Christianity they tried to authorize. Listen to this. I want you to, uh, I'm going to read a little bit more. The wide diversity of early Christian Christianity may be seen above all in the theological beliefs embraced by people who understood themselves to be followers, followers of Jesus. Now look at this. In the second and third centuries, they're not even talking about the first century. The first century is even more diverse. In the second and third centuries, there were Christians who believed that God had created the world, but others believed that this world had been created by a subordinate, ignorant divinity. Why else would the world be filled with such misery and hardship? Listen to this. Yet other Christians thought it, it was worse than that, that this world was a cosmic mis mistake created by a malevolent divinity as a place of imprisonment to trap humans and subject them to pain and suffering. In the second and third centuries, there were Christians who believed that the Jewish scripture, scripture, the Christian Old Testament, was inspired by the one true God. Others believe it was inspired by the God of the Jews, who was not the one true God. Others believed it was inspired by an evil deity. Others believed it was not inspired. In the second and third centuries, there were Christians who believed that Jesus was both divine and human, God and man. There were other Christians who argued that he was more, that he's completely divine and not human at all. I mean, listen to this. Essentially, why, why does he go from, he talks about the second and third centuries? Because in the third century and the fourth century, this is when we begin to see what we can only call orthodoxy. So the form of Christianity that you see now is the Orthodox tradition. When he says imperial Christianity, that's the Christianity that you know. <laughs> you don't know this early stuff. You can't say the original Christianity versus the imperial tradition. This makes no sense. And Elder Yara, every time he tangles with me, he gets embarrassed. Every single time. Every time, Yara, he learned his lesson. Every single time. <laughs> yeah, Elder Yara, man. Every single time. Now listen, here's a, here's a quick one for him. If you're talking about the quote-unquote Old Testament, you're talking about Jewish text, not Christian text. They become Christian text later. But when do we see the first Christian text written? Scholars would say at earliest we see it at 70 CE. This is the end of the first century. The end. Unless you're going to talk about the letters of Paul. And Paul has very, Paul doesn't speak very much about much of what is Christianity. Paul's major position is Jesus's death and resurrection is Christianity, and everything else is, is in unimportant. And maybe he doesn't even know about everything else. I showed this in the debate, by the way. What was Richard Carrier's response? Jabari's not showing you the parts of the of the um of first Corinthians that show you something else. Don't you think that if you say that, that means that you have to show what I've not what I've not included? Did he do that? Of course not. He just said it. Why? Because you're supposed to believe that he is the expert. That is what he was doing. And in many ways, it was insulting to this community. This is a community of thinkers. We have to understand the positions that are being made. It's that simple.
Let me show you. I want to show you what I show. Maybe I shouldn't go through all of this now because it's gonna play videos. Hey, I don't Murray, do Murray, yes. did I surprise you? You heard um, Garfield say that Doctor Clark was not a source. Listen, did that? I think a lot of people missed that. That was crazy to me. Doctor Clark's not a source. Yeah, but Edward, but um, Richard Carrier is a source. Mm, mm, mm. And I think what they're saying is, and I'm going to say this later, I'm going to say this later, Richard Carey is a source because he is a PhD. That's what he's saying. By the way, you should know that Dr. Um, Clark did receive a, a doctorate. You should know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's not a source. Dr. Um, Dr. Clark talked about these issues, studied these issues, much more than what Richard Carrier has done. Much more. Yeah. But he's not a source. Um, does would Richard Carrier even call himself really a source of in the way that um that Garfield and and Ankh and others and Yara are saying? He's already he already has said to us that he does not know ancient Kemet. The only thing he knows is Hellenized um Kemet. That's it. Hellenized Egypt is what he knows. He said this to us. When I asked him for dates on some things, he got very upset and flustered and ran away. If you saw the way and you saw that. Listen to what I showed to you about what Paul said. He says, this is in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 7. And then you're going to see 12 to 14. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then the twelve, after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, from, of who the greater part remain, remain until unto this the present but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Hey, brother. Now, wait, wait, let me finish this. Yeah. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain. He's already said nothing else really matters if you don't believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus. This is the argument. So you could talk about all kinds of other stuff. They're going to try to describe all sorts of other things that are so critical to Christianity. Paul doesn't agree with you. Well, how about you fight with St. Paul on this? How about you fight with St. Paul, the person who nearly single-handedly allows Christianity to be a thing? So this is important. Sonetta, you were trying to say something. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Yes, yes. Um, now you know I gotta I gotta pay the bills, Jabari, and I gotta I gotta hear a word from my sponsors. And this is only gonna be a minute. Go ahead. All right, I gotta have a word from one of our sponsors here and um gotta pay the bills, man. Yep. I already know who you're going to play. Come on now. Play it already. What's going on, man? It's Captain Pizarre. Y'all yeah, know how I do. Got my business, Call Gas Creations, formerly TLC. I always like to do commercials to show y'all new scents and stuff I got going. So the new scents, I'm going to do the ladies first. I got Bite Me. Self-explanatory. Bite Me because it bite when you put it on gonna work with you i got curve curve is not the curve that you notice the curve that i made uh extremely potent smell then i have toxic crush for women these are all for women that you know we say we don't like toxicity but i think we love it this is your toxic crush right here then for the fellas i got curve for men this bites just like the other curve bites is for men also got d by carl gas you don't you definitely want to take advantage of that. My last, my favorite one I've been wearing since I made it is called Charm. I had to pull it out of my pocket. So make sure you can find all my products 
You can go on Etsy, Call Gas, um, Creations on Etsy, or you can do callgas.com to go on my Amazon site. Make sure you check all these and my other fly products out. They're available right now. All right, family, make sure y'all click that link. We got Captain Tazaria link in the chat for those of y'all who want to show love and support the brother out there doing what he do, and he got his own business going on. So show some support to our brother, Captain Tazaria. Brother um, Jabari, you yes. got anything coming up real quick, though? Uh, I have some classes that I'll probably start, I'll announce. But the you most start, important you thing... Start making me some commercials, brother. For the yes, kids. I do. But the most important thing that I have to tell you is we have announced our trip to Kemet and to Ghana. There you go. If you want to travel, you should go. It's going to be an amazing trip. Kemet begins on, on July 31st. And um, then we go, after 12 days, we go to Ghana. Now, listen, people do either Kemet and Ghana, or they do both. So you could do both. It, it's, it, it really de uh, depends on you. So okay. please go to jabariosase.com and find out more. Okay, so take a look at this, Sonnetter. This is where I'm saying this is dangerous, right? Look at this. Put this up, please, if you can. All right. What's the cost of Garfield and Yara's comments on sources and experts? We have to recognize that we have to now say, what is an expert? Because they've said that Anthony Browder is not an expert, although the, wow. the Egyptian right. government views him as an expert. He's actually leading an archaeological dig. He has Egyptologists, people who have degrees in Egyptology, who work for him. He's not an expert. They said Dr. Ben's not an expert. They said Dr. Clark's not an expert, but they are saying that Richard Carrier is an expert. This is dangerous. We have to ask ourselves, do you have to have a PhD in their ideas to have an to be an expert? Is that what it is? Is it that they're saying that in order to be an expert, you have to have a PhD? Is that what they're saying? Because if that's what they're saying, that's really problematic. Because part of what the, the problem of what they're saying is, is that, well, that means that none of these conversations we're having are helpful. Sonetta, you and I should not talk about anything because we don't have PhDs. By the way, I have a, a bachelor's degree and I'm about to complete my third master's. Third. And I'm really hoping by March, you're gonna see me in a top flight Histor history program as as a doc in as a doctoral candidate. I've made those applications. The recommendations are in. We're gonna see how that works. Like the video, thumb up the video. But if that's the case, then you have to say, well, none of us should be talking. None of us should be talking. And once again, what about specialties? Because just being a doctor, just having a, a doctoral um, a degree in one of these areas, does that is that what allows you to be um, the person that can speak? Look at what Dr. Carrier says about himself. He says he's a world-renowned, this is from his website. He's a world-renowned author and speaker, a professional historian, pu um, published philosopher, and prominent defender of the American free thought movement. By the way, the free thought movement is the atheist movement. Dr. Carrier has appeared across the United States, Canada, and the UK and Puerto Rico, and on American television and Canadian and London radio, defending histor sound historical methods, blah, 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 blah. It says he has a PhD from Clinton University in ancient history. He specializes in the intellectual history of Greece and Rome, Greece and Rome. He specializes in the intellectual history of Greece and Rome, particularly ancient philosophy, religion, religion and science, with emphasis on the origins of Christianity and the use uh, and progress of science under the Roman Empire. Where do we hear Africa being um, uh, uh, discussed here? Where? Can he talk about ancient Kemet? He's not even equipped to have this conversation. He's not the expert in this regard. I'm the expert, as, at, at least in relation to him. 
So this is really, really interesting. He's not an expert on the topic we're talking about. This is the analogy I'm giving once again is, would you allow your dentist to give you a colonoscopy? Well, he has a, he has a, a medical degree. But you would say, no, this, he has nothing to do with this topic. That's Richard Carrier. That's Richard Carrier. And overall, if he is the expert, what does that mean for the rest of us? It means that none of us should be engaging in any of these conversations because we are not experts. This is really destructive to the communities that we've all built on social media and on YouTube, Sonnetter. That means that none of us should be able to talk. None of us. By the way, out closer to the PhD than Garfield and and um, and Ankh, I would love for them to show their credentials. They critique me and talk about what I say all the, all the time. Should I just say you're not an expert? Does that mean that when I acquire my PhD, I don't have to show sources anymore? I can just tell them things? Is that what is that the standard they're talking about? Or they have have they gotten confused by the fact that this guy is a white PhD? I think that's part of what's happened. And that's not Carrier's fault. That's their fault. That's their fault. So this is a real problem that we have. Uh, in our community. Okay, let's shift to the rest of our topic for tonight. And I want to talk about um, how we get to the concept. This this addresses some of what we heard um, uh, 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 Garfield and others say yesterday. They love to frame arguments in a way that's supposed to make it most advantage, advantageous for them, but they're not really good at it, right? Garfield said, I was lying to the people that there is no um, virgin birth in ancient Kemet. That's what he said. That's what he said. Why do he say that? Is it because he's read the Kemetic text? You've seen he's gotten embarrassed by me. It's because he's done some Googling. He's not visited the sites. Look at this site right here. This is called Ipet Risyet, the Temple of Luxor. Luxor. Very important space. And I want you to recognize that the Temple of Luxor, within the Temple of Luxor, there were at least, after Kemet fell, there were at least five churches within the temple. And there's even an active mosque. This is the front of the, can you see this area right here, Sonnetter? The, these are the, the that's the yeah. seven. Yeah, of the temple. The, what the Greeks call the pylon. So when you look at this here, on the other side of this section right here is a working mosque. Wow. There is a mosque and, a, and there were five churches within this temple. You can even see here where some of these um, folks during the Roman era, they had actually plastered over the comedic text and put their own images there. Now, hold up, Jabari. Are you saying that they put a moss over the temple, um, over yes. the Kemetic building? That's what I'm saying to you. Damn. Now, wow. you would only know that if you had been there. Damn. But this temple is critical. Not only do you see two of the most important modern traditions present at some time in this temple, one of them still acting. Still acting. But in addition to this, you have to understand that this temple also encodes information with regard to the divine birth. It's here in this temple. Mm. Here's a temple of Pilak. I'm going to go into it in a second. Here's a temple of Pilak. Temple of Pilak, today known as Philae, is the last comedic temple, the last major comedic temple that was allowed to exist. When and we see. Should I play this video? I will. I want you to listen to me leading a part of my tour in the Temple of Pelok, talking about what happened when the Christians got there. Listen to what, I've, what I'm saying here. I want you to get the context. Brother Sharif has done a lot of the heavy lifting, so I can just give you context, right? He's really described this very well. Can you hear that, Sonata? recognize that this space is the space yes, I, I hear it. to see African civilization truly become... Um, fragmented 
right? Mm -hmm. So you see the original temple. This is built by a native ruler. His comedic name would have been Nox Neb F. The Greeks called him Nectanebo, right? That's the first temple. But underneath there, we would have seen a temple built by Taharka, the Nubian ruler. And you might say, well, why does a Nubian build here? Why do we see such Nubians here? This island, in many ways, was the, the, the communication point between sub-Saharan Africa and the Mediterranean. And that's one of the reasons why this region remains so important. So we see a Nubian ruler build the first temple here. Then we see a native ruler, Nakhnebef, build another temple here. And then this stuff is built by the Greeks, right? Mm. By local people, according to local standards, with Kemetic ideology. But we see it built under Ptolemy 2, 5, and 7. Mm. It is a really important place to study the, the work, the worship, the concept of the great mother Ast. Now, wait a minute. I just showed you a temple that was built primarily, the, what the, the extant stuff, was built under Greek rulers. And they were working with the local people to build it. How do they know about the Kemetic tradition? Stop asking that question. It doesn't make sense. It shows that you have not been anywhere. In that same temple, look at the desecration. Look at the desecration. This is likely by the Coptic Christians, because this is a Coptic cross here. Can you see that? Carved right into yep. the temple. Yep. And you'll even see this one. There I am, same day. I'm wearing the same clothes. Can you see that? Yeah. Also damaged. Look at this one. This is of Ast, the great mother. And there are probably thousands of chisel strikes. You don't do this one day. You have to get up there with a scaffold. This is your job to desecrate this. You do some chisel work, and at the end of the day, you go, oh, it's time to go home. Wow, I did a lot of work today. I'm going to come back tomorrow and destroy more of the comedic tradition. This doesn't happen overnight. It might have taken this person weeks to do this with scaffolding, with equipment. This was done by the early Christians. I don't understand how the only way that you can make some of the arguments that are being made is if you've never been anywhere. This is what is happening. So let's continue. Let me ask you, Ari. Yes. Where do you see these buildings, these, these statues, let's say in the next 20 years? You some of them will be there or they'll be gone. Some of them will be completely destroyed, Son Etter. Mm. Some of them will be completely destroyed unless they need to treat this like a museum or something. Treat well, it is supposed to be a museum. Yeah. But every day people are doing more desecration. Not as much as what happened during the period I'm showing you, but there's more. You see new names chisel in there. Right. I see people doing stuff and I tell them to stop and they go, Who are you? And I go, I am the ancestor of the person whose work you're destroying. And they get really upset. I saw someone burning his name on with a lighter just two years ago. Guess what I did? I got so upset. And I'm telling you to cool, keep cool. Guess what I did? What you did? <laughs> I slapped the lighter out of his hand. <laughs> mm. Okay. So listen to what um, Catherine Nixie says. Another source. This is not just my ideas. This is what Catherine Nixie says in her excellent book, The, the Darkening Age, um, 2017. She says, on no, page 115, nevertheless, we've written, we're written sources, we're written, uh, uh, that's a typo, we're written sources are silent, archaeology can speak volumes. In Egypt, countless chisel blows neatly defaced the images of the gods while, the, while in, in Dendera. Oh my goodness, there's so many typos, folks, I'm sorry. Divine figures were attacked with tiny hack marks, usually several hundred for each figure. The archaeologist Eberhard Saucer, Saucer, a specialist in archaeology of religious hatred, has observed that the closeness of these cuts and, and the irregularity hints at blows made with almost frenetic rapidity. Another excellent book that you have to get. 
The Darkening Age. I'm looking for it on my shelf, but I'm not going to search for it because it's going to take a long time. The, it should be right in the area I can grab it because anyway. Uh, the Darkening Age by Catherine Nixie. Excellent, excellent, excellent uh, 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 book. Yes, this is a source. Again! <laughs> um, with regard to the idea to um, of, of folks saying that there is no virgin birth in Kemet, this is what people will say. Look at this website. This is Belief Map. Scholars agree Horus was not a virgin. This is what he says. Horus had a biological father and was conceived through sex. By the way, his biological father was dead. It, look how they interesting left that out. Look at how he actually left that out on this website. So whatever you say, at the time, Asar was already dead. He was a spirit. Okay. And was conceived through sex. So you're saying that Asar had sex with the spirit, right? Okay. Okay. Belief Map argues that there are only two different versions of how Heber was conceived. First, they say, Horus was conceived by the union of Osiris and his wife just before Set killed Osiris. I would love to see them show a source on that. And the second one is Horus was conceived by the union of Horus and with and wife Isis just after Set killed Osiris and scattered pieces of him. And Isis reconstructed him, creating for him a new penis since the fish ate that piece of him. So how is this a sexual, sexual intercourse? Unless you are actually trying to be derogatory and saying that she created some kind of, of bizarre um, uh, phallus. This is ridiculous. Even in what they're saying, it doesn't make sense. This is false. How about um, other sources? The Voice Dallas Theological Seminary and this website crossexamine.org. Listen, by the way, crossexamine.org tries to train um, Egypt apology, uh, a Christian apologist on how to defend Christianity. That's their, that's what they do. And look at, look at what he says. He says, the virgin birth of Christ was not patterned after myths. Listen to what they say. In Egyptian mythology, Horus's mother Isis was already married to the god Osiris for some time before his conception. Furthermore, the best Egyptian account of the myth reveals that Horus was not born of a virgin. So the idea that the church copied the story of Jesus' virgin birth of Christ from Horus does not work as there is no ancient evidence of a story about Horus being born of a virgin. Is that true? It is not. This is false. How about cold case Christianity with Jay Warner and Jimmy Wallace? They say Horus was not conceived of a virgin. In fact, mural and textual edge of evidence from Egypt indicates Isis. There is no evidence that Mary was ever part of her name. That is wrong, by the way hovered over the erect penis she created of Osiris to conceive Horus. By the way, when she hovers, she's a bird. This sounds like sexual intercourse to you? Okay. While she may have been a virgin before conception, she utilizes Osiris's penis to conceive. She later had another son with Osiris as well. That's an interesting story, and I'd love for them to explain that. There is no evidence of three wise men as part of the story of Horus at all. That's wrong. Seb was actually the earth god. He was not Horus's earthly fa father. Seb is not the equivalent of Joseph. And in most cases, Seb was is described as Osiris's father. I don't even know why they get to Geb here. I, I'm not even sure where they're going. This is false as well. So let's show you some of the information, right? I should have taken Reggie off of here. Reggie, I'm not trying to have an argument with you. This is this is about our earlier conversation, and has that has nothing to do with you. Um, but some of these slides come from an earlier discussion, as you know. And I want to be really clear that this is the discussion that we need to have today. Look here. Arguments advance on the virgin birth. Scholars agree that Ast or Is Isis or Ass did not have a virgin birth. What are we saying here, though? Which scholars? Are these biblical scholars? Which scholars are they citing? When they say scholars agree, that's almost like when you look at television on a commercial and they say, doctors agree. Which doctors? Who? How come you never name them? Where does that come from? 
Second, the comedic virgin birth, KV, um, uh, KVB adherents are simply against Christianity. Most KVB adherents were once Christian. Their default setting is and was not anti-Christian. The apologists are anti-pagan. So I want you to understand that. As someone who is um, a part of the comedic tradition, I'm not anti. My mother is Christian. My family is Christian. I'm not anti-Christian. But the people who are making these arguments are definitely anti-everybody else. So there's a different way that these arguments are made. They say, claim no original source of the virgin birth. What you have to ask them many times is, have you read the comedic text yourself? Do you think that these folks have read the comedic text? If you haven't read them, how do you know? Did you just Google something? Did you ever go on a study tour and look at the sources yourself? Let's continue. I want you to recognize that these are problematic. And once again, I'm going to use this analogy. Just because Spaceballs by Mel Brooks is not the same as Star Wars by George Lucas, you can see that one is based on the other. The stories are not the same. They're not the same. My argument is that early Christians remixed the comedic tradition according to their own social mores and culture and created something based on something else that was different, but the basic ideas come from ancient Africa. That's my position. So when people say, well, look at this. This doesn't come from ancient Africa. This isn't from... Um, Africa. So obviously the comedic tradition didn't come from Africa. Uh, the argue, I'm not saying that everything in Christianity came from Africa. I've never said that. I said the most important aspects came from it. That's what I've said. And I've proved it over and over and over again. Elder Yara, it's probably too late for you to be up. You probably should um, have the nurse put you to bed. So let's... <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be burning. <laughs> you should be able to recognize the difference and the similarities. You should be able to recognize them. So this is really important. Let's continue. Um, he's asking to drop the link. Brother, I'm in the middle of a presentation. You're not getting no link. If you want to stay up a little bit longer, you know, then maybe you can get in, but not now. Okay. So look. Mother Ost and, and, Vir and the Virgin Mary, their similarities are astonishing. Look at Ost nursing Heru. Look at Mary nursing Jesus. There's a way that these appear. In fact, some of the virgins of Mary and Jesus are called the Black Madonna and Child. Why? Because there are even some people in the oldest churches of Europe that recognize that the origin of this is African. And you're going to see the Black Madonna and Child all over Europe. And also, you'll find it also in, for example, the Caribbean, in South America. There are even a few in, in the United States that have them as well. Let's continue. And you should know that you can see how this was being altered because Later in the Greco-Roman period, this is how they depicted Ost and Heru. Can you see that? That's Ost and Heru. At least that's what the Gre in the Greco-Roman period, they wanted to say that this is Isis and Horus. So is this a stretch to say that this is where it came from? And let's also recognize that the weeping mother archetype was based on the weeping wife archetype, where we actually see Ast in sorrow because her husband had been killed. In the Christian tradition, is it exactly the same? No. But now we see the weeping wife archetype in that famous statue known as the Pieta on the right. There are many, many more statues and images of Ast in sorrow because of the death of her son, the death of her husband. So let's continue. Let's see. 
I want to show you some sources. Let's look at some sources. Let's look at some sources. And I'm going to show some of these are from another, discu another discussion, but not all of them. So keep, keep watching, okay? This is from the coffin text, where we see that the soul of Asar is what creates Heru. That's how this is here. By the way, let me make a, a quick comment. You should know that when the Kemetic people created this divine birth of Heru, they weren't trying to say that, they weren't trying to say as specifically that Ast was just a virgin. This is a divine birth. And essentially, when we look at the story of Jesus, that's a divine birth too. There's even disagreement as to whether she's a virgin. I know you've heard those conversations about what was supposedly the um, the scripture in the Jewish text and then what happens in the Septuagint. I know you've heard this. In ancient Kemet, they were describing a divine birth, a <laughs> birth that did not occur with regular human intercourse. So look at coffin text utterance 94, causing the skull, the soul to escape from the corpse. Another book for going out into the day. I am this great soul of Asar, is whom the Netaru commanded to copulate with him. He living on high by day. I have remade Asar from the efflux which was in his flex, flesh, from the seed which was issued from his phallus at the going out into the day that he might copulate with it. So the soul has created a version of Asar in order to inseminate um, uh, uh, Ast. This is a soul. I am the son of Asar, his hair within his rank. I am the soul within his blood. I am he who uncovers the great crown of lower Kemet, which belongs to Asar, the uncovering of which the Netru fear, because I am this great soul of Asar, whom the Netru commanded to copulate with him. He living on high by day, I have remade Asar from the Ekflux from his flesh. They're saying to you that we're talking about a spiritual birth. No description of Ast and Asar having intercourse. This is the coffin text. We're talking about right after the pyramid text. The earliest coffin text, this utterance comes from about 2100 BCE. 2100 BCE. This is before we could even show you that there's a country of Greece or a country of Rome. Long before there's a Christianity. And you know what? Carrier tried to say that I was jumping around. Yes, friend, because I'm showing you ancient uh, original sources and then showing you Christianity. If you don't think that's how this is done, how did you get so confused about what the debate was? Ankh says he wasn't jumping around. He told a very clean story without any sources. It's easy to tell a clean story without any sources. Let's continue. Look at this one. This is in utterance 148. Once again, the coffin text, 2100 BCE. 2100 BCE. This is before Judaism. Let's be clear. Before the other mystery traditions, the traditions that would become the mystery traditions based on the Kemetic tradition, long before Christianity. Listen to what is said here in utterance 148. And you can see here that Ast is now impregnated by thunder, the taking shape as a falcon. The lightning flash strikes and the Netru are afraid. Ast wakes up pregnant with the seed of her brother Asar. The woman raises herself in a hurry, her heart rejoicing over the seed of her brother Asar. And she says, oh, Netaru, I am Ast, the sister of Asar, who wept for the father of the Netaru Asar, who parted the slaughterings of the two lands. His seed is within my body, and it is as the son of the foremost of the Aeneid, who will rule this land and who will become the heir to Geb, and who will speak for his father, and who will slay the enemy of his father, Asar, that I have molded the shape of the Netaru within my egg. Come, O Netaru, so that you shall make his protection within my womb. Know in your hearts that your Lord is he, this Netaru. Here we see us being impregnated by thunder. 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 Is this a regular both? A regular birth? What are we seeing here? What are we seeing here? 
This is a divine birth. Let's continue. By the way, I want you to see this. This temple is the Seti, the temple of Seti the first, 19th dynasty. 19th dynasty. Someone give me the, I'm not going to even give you the dates. Give me the dates of the reign of Seti the first. Give me the dates for the reign of Seti the first. I want you to do some heavy lifting. And I also want some of you to tell me who is Seti the first father and who is Seti the first son. Because then you'll be able to see some more of this. By the way, this is in a place called Ab Abydos today, Abydos. But the ancient Kemetic people called this Abtu, Abtu. Let's continue. And you're going to see images of Ast, Asar, and Heru. Here is Seti I paying offerings to Ast, Asar, and Heru. Can you see that? He's paying offerings to him, to them, the holy family here. Asar on the throne, bound. Yes, his father was Ramses I. Good. And we see 1290 to 1279 BCE. Yes, very good. Around 1300 BCE. Very good. Very good. So you can see what date I'm talking about. Dates are important. And so you see Seti I giving offerings to them. And you can even see that Seti I is depicted sitting on the lap of Ast. Can you see this? He's saying he is Heru. Can you see that? Yes, I can see it. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You killing him with real scholarship. You showing it, man. I mean, real this is, listen, I don't even understand how we're having some of these debates. And as you look at this book, this is an old book. My pages are almost falling out. It's called the Temple of King Sethos. This is how the Greeks called him, the first at Abydos. And as you look here, you're going to see that this is in one of the courts of this temple. Okay? It's fragmentary. Can you see that it's been damaged, Sonetta? Yeah, yeah, I see it. But here you see an image of Ast with a crown. Uh, this is the throne, the throne crown, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what you see here? What's that? Offerings. When it were. This is us speaking. She says, "Nuke when it were." Uh oh. Someone said, "I don't like this." Usually, the person that describes things after the debate is the loser. <laughs> Actually, the debate wasn't on um, uh, the virgin birth. This is a response to what Garfield said yesterday. Right. Just, so just you don't know what you're talking about. This wasn't the debate topic. This is this is a different topic. Yeah. So look, nuke when it were, right? Nuke when it were. Nuke, nuke when it were means I am the great virgin. And this is in the temple of Abydos. The temple is of Abtu. That's what this is. She's saying she is speaking herself. And she's telling you she's the great virgin. By the way, some of you continue to say, I can't read the metronet, or I, I don't know how I was able to read that and, and, and show it to you. But, you know, I already told you I'm not an expert. I, I read very slowly and I'm a beginner. But that's what you're seeing here. Nuke, when it were. I am the great virgin. I am the great virgin. What? Oh. Hold on. Hold on. That's what it say? But you didn't. Uh, you just saw that? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, God. <laughs> this Man. is in the temple. Uh, uh, uh. By the way, Pan African Design and Apparel says, what date is this? I asked you all to find the date, right? This is around 1300 BCE. So I've gone from 2100 BCE to 1300 BCE. Mm. That's what I'm showing you. Show me any female deity outside of Kemet who was doing this at this point. 
yeah. from 2100 to 1300. There's a long history of this. This is in the temple. Let's continue. Let's continue. I'm not going to talk to you about here. It would take too long. But I want you to understand that this is um, how we see the birth, well, the Annunciation. I'm not going there now. Too much time. And then here is what Garfield um, uh, read, right? He thought that he had more information. He Googled something and he said, oh, my goodness. This is um, this is from the the Greco Roman the uh, Ptolemaic period. This is a papyrus known as the Papyrus of Nesmen, but it should be Nessi Amsu. It's often called the Bremer Rhind Papyrus. It is true that this is from the Ptolemaic period, but you have to put it in context. This um, papyrus describes the ceremony that was held where. It describes the ceremony that was held in the same place where you saw Nuke when at Ur, in the temple in Abydos. That's what it is. It's describing the ceremony. And you should also understand that no one argues that that ceremony was created during that time. But look at how they describe her. This is from a scholarly source, right? This is from um, the Journal of Egyptian um, Archaeology. And this is right from R. O. Faulkner. And he's describing the Bremer Rhine papyrus that he translated. Now, I want you to understand the Bremer Rhine papyrus is very interesting. Why? Because what happens here is they are... Um, uh, uh, they are describing a ceremony, right? They're describing a ceremony. And you have to understand, if I show it to you long before there was a Greece or Rome, and then I show it to you under the time that the Greece and Roman, Greeks and Romans are there, guess what I'm telling you? That the Greeks and Romans were present when these ceremonies were occurring. Prove transmission. Are you not listening I said the other night, I know some of you might have taken the short bus to school, but do you also take it to work? <laughs> Are you not listening? You got approved transmission. What? <laughs> I showed you these ideas long before Greece and Rome, long before the, um, the, um, uh, uh, the um, mystery traditions, long, long before um, uh, uh, Christianity long before Judaism. And I'm bringing it forward for you to see that this stuff was still going on when the Greeks and Romans were there. That's how they know. Do you not understand the argument? Or do you just think he's jumping around? I'm talking about ancient history. Let's see what Faulkner says about this ceremony. In the footnotes, yes, you have to read the translations and the footnotes. Why? Because if you're a scholar, you have to read the footnotes. I remember years ago when I was a young man, Sonnetter, I was in the class of an incredible scholar, um, the scholar who more than anyone else put energy into a young Corwin Jacobs who would become Jabari Osaze, the scholar known as James, Dr. James Turner at Cornell. And he, I had a test in his class and there were, there were 50 people in the class, 100 questions. No one got more than 30 questions right. The highest grade was 30 out of 100. Everyone got less. I knew someone that got seven right. Guess who got the 30 on the test? Who? Oh. Jabari Osaze, Corwin Jacobs, <laughs> who will become Jabari Osaze. Now, listen, it was on a curve. So my 30 was an A. But was I was it good enough for me? I marched into his office and said, I looked at the exam again, and these questions are not in the reading. This one, this one, this one, this, and I went on and on. And Dr. Turner sat back at his desk and said, hmm, hmm. And then finally he said, for that question you just mentioned, 
is it possible that it might be in the footnotes? And I sat there as a young man and said, the footnotes? He said, yes, when I gave you pages to read, did I tell you to exclude the footnotes? Or does a scholar read the footnotes? I tried to get out that office so quick, son, that I was embarrassed. Scholars read the footnotes. Why? Because the footnotes give you their argument and what? Their sources. That's how I'm trained. That was in 1991. Some of y'all weren't even alive in 1991. When I received, when, at, in process for me receiving my Africana Studies degree. With Dr. James, some of you should look up Dr. James Turner and see how amazing he was. Um, and when he died, it, it, and I'm going to get a little weepy. When he died, it really hurt me that he passed away, even though he was sick and, and older. Because um, he was almost like an intellectual father to me and he, when he died two years ago. Anyway, listen. Um, look at, here's the translation. Here's the translation. And you're actually going to see um, here begins the stanzas of the festivals of the two kites, which is celebrated in the temple of Asar. First of the Westerners, the great God, Lord of Abidal. So they're telling you that this was done in the temple of Asar. That's the same temple I showed you with the inscriptions from 1300 BCE. This is just the description of the ceremony, which was described under the Greeks. Are you telling me that it was uh, it was written there, but this is something that the Greeks did and it wasn't comedic? Does that argument make sense, Garfield? No, it can't. So it says here, um, there shall be brought in two women, pure of body and, what's that word, Sonetta? And... Virgin. Virgin, with the hair of their bodies removed and their heads adorned with wings, tambourines in their hands. By the way, there's a reason why you like the tambourine in church. Africans have been using the tambourine for probably tens of thousands of years. It's a, it's a came after the shekere. Anyway, let's continue. And their names inscribed on their arms to wit Isis and Nephthys. So these ladies on their arms shall be written their names, Ost and Enbed Hats. Mm. Damn. These dudes, man. These dudes, bro. Even That's though we're still showing this, Jabari, they still going to come with their tomfoolery. Them pseudos over there smashed them, killed them, chopped them up. He ready constantly, to kill them. constantly. Constantly. And I want you to look at, here goes the description. Can you see that that was in 1-3? Here's the commentary. This is the footnotes. He says that the name that was used for these ladies is Nen Wepet Sen, which means who have not been opened. Oh, look at that. And you know what, Jabari? When you kill, what I notice is when you kill them with facts, evidence, and you show the source and you show them where to get it from, it just makes them matter instead of making them learn more. Instead of going and say, damn, all right, what's the sense of getting sources, right, that they always ask for? And when you show the source, that makes them matter and make them want to hate you more because you're right. Them niggas are sick over there. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then I want you to look. They're even telling you that earlier in the West Car Papyrus, that's Old Kingdom, by the way, we see a longer phrase, Nen Wepet Sen Mess. That even means even more. It's a longer phrase, but not been opened by birth. This is part of a, a longer phrase. That's what this is. That's what this is. And he even shows you in this section here, the Papyrus, Memorandum Papyrus, British Museum 10188, the songs of Ost and Nephthys. Here go, here go the glyphs. Here go, this is Nen Wepet Sen. Nen Wepet Sen. Actually, this says Nen Wepet Senu. Because you see these three um, strokes? That's the pluralization. Nen. This, this symbol here is supposed to be like someone shrugging, son, Netter. Nen, this is the N sound, Nen. Sometimes in the comedic language, they replicate the final vowel sound in the word. This is Sen by itself, but this is replicating the N sound. Nen, Wepet, 
Sanu. Mm, then what is Sanu? That means who have not been opened. Men, oh man, Smash is in the building too. So yeah, yeah. That's I'm gonna say to you. I'm gonna say this to you very clearly. Garfield just googled the source and saw that the papyrus is a papyrus that was um, that is from the Ptolemaic era. But no one argues that that it's a copy from the Ptolemaic era. Everyone argues, knows that this is an ancient ceremony. It's written in on the walls of the temple from 1300 BCE. Mm. They're just happening to write it down here. This is the same temple where you saw on the walls that Asta's saying, I am the great virgin. Same temple. So this is really important for us to understand how this works. Um, maybe I won't go through all of this. I'll tell you quickly. Also in this temple is the story where the two ladies, known as the Marie, by the way, these two ladies go and they they pine they pine for um, uh, for uh, the their 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 brother to return. It's about Asar to return, and he is resurrected. It's called the Hall of the Awakenings. And this, I believe, is where they get the origin of the story of the two Marys going to the tomb to see Jesus. Here you see the two ladies, and they've assisted in his resurrection. This is the Jed column, the symbol of resurrect, the resurrection of Asar, the backbone of Asar. Here's life, Ankh. And these arms are Ka. This is his soul. He's illuminated. He is born and going into where? Heaven. Can you see this, this area here that has this, this bar here that has a little triangles on the end? That's the glyph for pet or heavens. He is resurrected into the heaven out of a rocky place on that. Look at the rocky place here. Yeah. But over here, we don't do research over here. You see the slander that them niggas be doing over there? But they my friends, though, um, Jabari. Those are my friends. Uh, but they slander my platform every day they get an opportunity to. But if they eating it off me, they 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 gonna be close. They to me. They're not gonna slam it. They good. They good. They good. I'm eating and I'm feeding and I'm, I'm I'm giving them money. They all right. But when I cut their ass off, now I become their enemy. When they no longer a part of my team, when we doing this together, and I say, you know what, I'm gonna do this on my own. Now they show their true colors of who they are. They this is all true. And they phony, bro. And I'm glad I see it. Go ahead, brother. Keep going. Now, as you look at this, you would have to say, well, wait a minute. Didn't the person that tell that story of the two Marys, they must have been familiar with the comedic story. That ceremony was occurring during the time that the Greeks, Romans, and Christians existed. Look at this. The person who paints this has to be aware of the earlier one. Look at the, when you recognize what you're seeing, can you see the similarities? Mm -hmm. Oh man, look one at that. older look than the other. Yes. Yo, hold that up again. Y'all see that right there? Look at this. That's where this comes from. Let's continue. Let, now let's talk about the the, the supernatural birth motif, because it's not just in us that you see this supernatural virgin birth. You also see it at other times in Kemet. This site is known as um, the mortuary temple of Queen Hatshepsut at Jesser Jesseru. Jesser Jesseru is the name. It means the sacredest of sacred places the most sacred of sacred places. It is a beautiful, beautiful space. And I have the honor to take people to see it every, every year. It is, um, uh, it is amazing. It's amazing. So as you look at this, you're going to see that the way that Hatshepsut, who was a queen, then elevates herself to king is she tells people that she is the daughter of the divine. That's what this is. So how does she do that? 
is getting late. I'm not going to go much further. Let's look at what Ancient Egypt Online says. By the way, someone tell me what years Hatshepsut was um, was reigning. I could give it to you. I want you to do the research. What year is this? What year did Queen Hatshepsut live? When was she in? Uh, when was she reigning? I'm, I'm not going to the next slide because it's going to be on the screen, but what year are we talking about? There we go. IFRS 1473 to 15 to 1458 BCE. That's when she reigned. 1400s. I've shown you um, stuff from 2100 BCE, from 1400 BCE, around 1500 BCE, 1300 BCE. I'm talking about long before these other uh, these ideas were outside. And I showed you that the Greeks and Romans were there when these ceremonies describing the sacred concepts were still extant in Kemet. Listen to what Ancient Egypt Online describes as something very interesting which occurs um, at the Hatshepsut Mortuary Temple. I can tell you what I've seen and what I've taken people to see. I want you to look at this source. By the way, Ancient Egypt Online is a really good source. There's lots of great information. But I want you to listen to what they say is something you will find in that temple. It says, in at, at the place of the temple called the birth colonnade. The birth colonnade is on the right-hand side of the ramp to the third level. The directions, which are repeated on the walls of the temple at Karnak. Wait a minute. It's in another temple too? Yes, that's what you just read. Depict Hatshepsut's divine birth. There has been significant damage caused to the images of Hatshepsut by her nephew, by the way, not going into that now, and to those of Amun. And this was probably attacked by Akhenaten's followers. But I want you to hear what they say is in this area. It says, in the depictions, Amun appears with the unborn Hatshepsut and then with her mother, Queen Amos, in the form of Hatshepsut's father, Teutimos I. Amun impregnates the queen with his divine breath, then reveals his true nature and foretells that Hatshepsut will rule Kemet. She's impregnant with the divine breath of Amun. The concept of this spiritual supernatural birth without human intercourse, what we would call a virgin birth today, is ancient in Kemet. And it's all over. It's not just in, in, um, in, in uh, uh, the story of Asta, Sar, and Heru. It's an old motif. You're not seeing, I'm not just the one saying it. So if I just said it to you, that'd be enough. I don't have to show you a source. Let's continue. How about this temple? This is once again the temple of Epet Risiet, known as Luxor Temple. Here is my group, not this year, not 2023, 2022, in front of it. This is my trip. Can you see me here? There I am, looking a little darker. <laughs> in the sun, looking darker. And um, I think you'll see Anika on the other side. Where's Anika? I'm missing where Anika is here. Where's Anika? Maybe she didn't come to this one. There was a point where she wasn't feeling well. That could be what happened here. Anyway, I want you to look at, um, I'm here with Yusir Raholtep, the Kemetic Yoga Master back here. And here are my two local folks who assist with everything. They are like brothers to me. I've known them for over 20 years. And they actually, this guy is an amazing historian, Sharif. Sharif al I, I I love him dearly. And here's my other good friend, Abdo. They are as close to me as I can, I can say. I would not be able to do these trips without them. And I've been working with them for a really long time. So, what happens in this temple? Remember I showed you the temple earlier that the Christians, this is the same temple that has the mosque and that there were at least five churches in it. Same one, same temple, 
So what do you find in this temple? By the way, this is me. This is last year standing in front of the a statue, a colossal statue of um, Ramses II. What am I talking about here? Do you look at their faces? They're like, what? You see their faces? They are they like, they're like, out. They like spooked out. What their the eyes are like this. Look. Yeah. Hey, yo. You know, know, you know, I know Smash want to come in and ask a question. Or Smash want to come in and say something. Sure. I'm almost. I'm almost. I'm. 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 I'm closing up here really soon. So here I am leading a tour in this section. By the way, this is a section of the temple almost no one goes in because they don't know what's here. Look at what's there. This is here. This is the birth scene of Amenhotep III, where we see, where we see, now this is after Hatshepsut, right? This is 13, Amenhotep III, who was the father of Akhenaten, the grandfather of King Tutankhamen, the father, the, the husband of Queen T. In fact, let me put them on the screen here. I don't know why this is stuck here. I'm so upset that this is hiding um, the Lady Queen T's face. I feel like that's almost insulting to her. Give me one second. I gotta, I can't, I can't let that stay there. One second, sorry. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so you're seeing Queen T, powerful queen, with her husband on the other side, Amenhotep III. And here you are seeing the description of the birth of Amenhotep III. And you can see the, the now this is a line drawing because the original is really damaged. This is what I was showing the group, but the line drawing is better. You can see it more clearly. So as you see here, you can actually see that Amun is putting an ankh to the nose. This is the divine breath runs again, right? To Amenhotep III's the father. And we know this is occurring in the heavens because these are the ladies of the heavens. Someone tell me who each of these ladies are based on their headdress. Do you know who they are? This one here has what looks like um, uh, uh, spears or needles above her head. And this one has... A, a scorpion above her head. Who are these two ladies? Someone tell me who these two ladies are. You can't hear? Can you hear me? Sister Freedom says you can't hear me. Can you hear me? I don't know. Can everyone else hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. The one with the scorpion on her head, yeah, there's something going on with your system, uh, Sister Freedom. I don't know why. Um, it, the lady on the left with the scorpion on her head is Serket. Yes, who said that? I have rule. Yes, Serket, sometimes called Selket. And the one on the right is Neat, the lady with the, the needles on her head. These are two divine ladies. This birth is happening in heaven. And can you see how they depict the intercourse? There's no human intercourse. They're sitting on thrones with their legs intertwined. This is how the comedic people are depicting spiritual intercourse. I want you to understand that this is neat. I say neat, but sometimes you'll hear neath. There's neath. And um, you'll see Sir Ket. Someone asked me to, I have asked me to spell the name. So there we go. Sir Ket is also spelled Selket sometimes. By the way, these are also the ladies that are on what most people know as the canopic jars, the Mesu Heru. These are two of the four ladies that are on there. Um, and so this is of critical importance. We are seeing, we are seeing um, uh, uh, Amenhotep's mother received the divine seed from a moon. By the way, this story is even more amazing because we see in the on this um, uh, description, you'll actually see um, Jehuti, the symbol of wisdom, coming to tell the mother that 
she's going to receive the seed of a moon. And then we see the angels, three of them, coming to assist in the conception. We see the insemination by breath. So much of what we know as the, um, the uh, conception of Mary is actually something we see on the walls of this temple. This is the temple that should be known as the Pet Risiet, which today is known as Luxor Temple. So this birth motif, Sonnetter, is an old one. It's an old one. And I think we should recognize that these concepts are concepts that come to us, come to us because of the concept of Mother Ost. That's where they come from. It is of critical importance for us to recognize that these narratives, these stories are part of the Kemetic mythological philosophy, the spiritual concepts of ancient Kemet. And then what we end up seeing is it goes into the rest of the world. That's what happens. By the way, we know some of the ways it goes into the Western world. I, I think I also mentioned, maybe I'll show this very briefly and then end. I think I already showed this before as well. I should show you this. I'll share this again really quickly. Some people continue to say, well, Jabari, how does it go to the world? Which is really bizarre to me. It's a really strange argument in my estimation. But there are people who continue to ask it. Here goes another way that we know it goes to the world. Have, you, have any of you heard of the Hermetic text? Mm -hmm. These are the texts that are in Greece and Rome that um, are supposed to be their encoding, in, 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 um, encoding ancient Kemetic wisdom to the, um, the rest of the Western world. This is how the wisdom of Kemet goes into um, the, the, the Western world. At least that's what they are attempting to do. And the oldest of the Hermetic texts is the one that is most comedic. It is called Kore Cosmo, Kore Cosmo. And Kore Cosmo means the virgin of the world. The story is about Ast teaching her son Heru. Look at a section of it here. It says, and Horus thereon said, how was it mother then that earth received God's efflux? And Isis said, I may not tell the story of this birth, for it is not permitted to describe the origin of your descent. You, are you hearing this? She's ask, he's asking, my father was dead. How did I was how did I how was I born? And she says, She may not tell the story of this, for it's not permitted to describe the origin of your birth. O oh, Horus. Mighty of power, lest afterwards the way of birth of the immortal gods should be known unto men, except so far that God the monarch, the universal orderer and architect, sent a little, sent for a little while that might sire Osiris and the mightiest god Itis, Isis, that they might help the world for all things needed them. This is how Asar is, uh, I'm sorry, Heru. Now, this is, this is. Later, right? This is about five, um, 510 BCE. Kemet still is in existence, but these ideas are going into the rest of the world. This is the first of the Hermetic text. This is where we get the ideas for the mystery traditions, from the Hermetic tradition. And here we see Heru asking his mother, how did you get pregnant with me if dad was dead? And she says, I can't tell you the story, but you should know that the Neteru allowed Asar to exist for a moment so I could receive your, his seed. What's the name of this book? Virgin of the World, Kore Cosmo. And supposedly it was written, as they say, the Virgin of the World is written by Hermes Thrice Great, which is the um, the Greek version of of, um, of Jehuti around 510 BCE. This translation is the GRS Mead translation of 1906. Once again, a source. A source. So these ideas are really old and they go into the world. Do you understand that? 
Do you understand this? You must prove transmission. You are so ridiculous. You're so ridiculous. This, these are the texts that this text, Corey Cosmo, goes into the Western world, telling them that Ast is the virgin of the world. Ast is clearly the recipient, the motivating character in a divine birth, a birth that occurs without regular intercourse. And in this story, we know that Ast does not have regular intercourse with the Tsar. It is a virgin birth. She tells you she's a great virgin. And then we see the descriptions of the ceremonies occurring in that great temple that should be known as the Temple of Abtu, saying that the ladies who perform and act to be her in the great ceremonies that were done during the time that the Greeks were in, in Kemet, those ladies were supposed to be Nen Wepet Sen, virgins. I'm telling you that this should be as clear as day. This is so important that we understand that the origin, the origin of these most important ideas are African. African, it is you who gave the world its most important traditions. Don't let a scholar who has never studied Africa tell you that it's wrong. He told you that he only knows Hellenized Egypt. That's what he said. The expert in this instance is the person that is completing his, disser his thesis. They call it dissertation in the UK. The school I'm going to right now is in the UK, you should know, the University of Chichester. Completing his degree on the history of Africa and the African diaspora, who already has a master's of divinity, already has an Africana studies bachelor's degree, has been has traveled to Kemet 24 times, taking uh, over 4,000 people on those trips, who has studied ancient Kemet and Christianity for over 30 years. I could teach a course on Greece and Rome. I don't do that. I could. I've studied Greece and Rome. I could. So I, I really have to say to you, family, that um, we should be secure with the idea, with the fact that it is you, African, that gave these traditions to the world. Do they look exactly the same as when they were practiced? Do they? No. No, they don't. But the most important aspects of these new traditions are things that they can't got from the African. So this is of critical importance. I see um, Amis, our minister saying Garfield also has a bachelor's degree. I, he's never shown it and he's never shown it to me. And he's never actually said, he said that he went to college but he didn't say he has a bachelor's degree. I don't know whether he does or not. I think that if he did, he probably would have said it many times. Um, so I don't know. I mean, maybe you have more information on this than I do. Um, but definitely I'm telling you that um, this is something that we have studied. This is something that we can interpret. This is something that we can know. But you have to, you can't say that something doesn't exist somewhere if you've never looked. And if you're going to make these arguments, you must use sources. How are you going to do it without any sources? And then we have people in our community that are giving him a pass and saying, he doesn't need sources because he's a PhD. What? PhDs use sources more than the regular folks. Ask, ask um, Christine Gay, the, the, the black woman who was the first black president of Harvard, what's happening right now with her because they're questioning her use of sources. She might get fired. She might get fired. We know that it's not really about her scholarship. It's actually about the fact that folks that are backing Israel doing whatever they want are saying that she should have backed Israel doing whatever it wants and that she should um, actually expel students who might be critical of Israel. That's really why they're after her. But you have to understand that that um, scholars understand understand sources. How if if he didn't understand sources, if Carrier didn't understand sources, then how could he ask me about my 
my sources. How could he? How could he? How y'all let him get away with that? Anyway, ask Claudine Gay how she feels about it. Because clearly oh, she's in trouble. Yo, hold on. Hey, Smash, you in Cali, right? Yeah. Is it cold out there? You got on the goose. Oh, you know what, man? <laughs> man. I moved into a new spot and this PG and E been killing me. I smoke so I keep my window open, right? I keep the window open so I'm not being a hypocrite to the kids. I say, put on some clothes, don't touch the heater. So All right. I do I do it my damn self. You know? No doubt. No doubt. What up with it though? Peace. Excellent presentation, Peace. Jabari. Peace, Smash. How you doing, brother? All, all is well. Can't complain. They've been they've been I mean, I'm catching flack just for telling them you be telling the truth. Now they don't like <laughs> now they don't like me no more. It's crazy. It really is crazy. Yeah. It really is crazy. And my understanding is they said some very vile things about you, too. Like, what? I ain't mad, though. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It come with the YouTube streets, but a certain people I didn't think could go there with me. But Garfield just got he. I mean, I see my name in every other video. I wake up every morning to say just Barry slash smash every day. Yeah. There's one going on right now. And so right. what can I say, man? Crazy. It's crazy. And you know the reality is that um, I think, and this, I'm, of course, I'm biased. I think I defeated Carrier not just in the fact that he didn't use any sources, but on the information, right? But right yeah. off the bat, if you don't show sources, how can you even say that you're in the argument? You know what I mean? I watched the debate. I think you won. Um, you had him on the sources, but you even won on decorum. And the ultimate arguments, uh, I don't think they'll be hashed out in a debate like that. Right. But we're presenting information to show our arguments, and he didn't show where he got his from. Yeah. I don't know how we can start accepting that now when it's been sourced up or shut up. Shout out to Raku Fu for having my new book, Black Like Osiris, right oh, there. Oh, wow. Where I go into some of them points. Yeah, yeah, that's that. I just put that out because of these conversations we've been having on the subject. And wow. so I, I really like you bringing out that attestation of they not being open uh, that you had on the screen, was, which was a, a, a testament to the uh, virginity of those young sisters you were mentioning. There are right. some other terms we could find there. And yeah. we, bang, we banged this out before, and I got to speak with my good brother Reggie about this for a yeah. long time. I did some videos on it. And we find one other term. Yep. There's actually one term, I can't remember it off the top, it's like waba, but we can find it in Vigus's dictionary if we look up the word deflowering. Mm. And so this word for deflowering was what I used to talk to my brother Reggie about, well, we don't find I said ever being deflowered, but I did show them uh, when Horus deflowered Tibetchet, uh, one of the scorp seven scorpion snakes, which were his wives, and so that they would indicate when a person has been deflowered, and they use yeah. that terminology, and I think the term was WBA. Uh, I'll try to pull it up. But, I'm but what I, up right my, point, my point to Reggie was saying, look, they don't say she was deflowered. They had a they had a term for that. Now, right. I mean, I hope I, I want to stay in my brother Reggie good graces at all times because that's one of my sabers, and so I don't be wanting them to be like, oh, why you do me like that? But he know we've had these discourses, and I had to. I was pitted to weigh in on the side of what you're saying that there seems to be some type of virgin birth way before um, Jesus. Right, right, right. I'm going to just the um, Ao dictionary on my phone. I know you know that app, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to pull it up so that you can, uh, so we can actually see the. Um, why is it taking so long? So we can actually see the um, what you're referring to, because it is there, Great. and um, there are there's more than one description, right? There's more than one word, just like there's more than one word in in English for someone who was a virgin. I don't know why exactly. we think it's just one term, but the, the, the deal is what they were really talking about is a spiritual birth, right? Mm -hmm. I think we have to not let people get off the hook because the original has an idea of what they're trying to say. The other ones um, are, are based on it. So you can't say that's not like Christianity. You have to say, well, they remixed it. That's what happened. They remixed it. Let's take a look. Here goes the um, in the dictionary right here. 
waba that that you were referring to. Can you put that on the screen, Sonetta? There it is. Exactly. Now, let's, let's, now notice the one at the top is a different term. If people are looking, it says something like "am um, am." Um. That is uh -huh. a male version, but in the middle right. we see "waba," which means to deflower. That means now this is the different because you found the testament that said she was a virgin, and I right. showed Reggie if she was not one, they have a term to say that that she right. has been deflowered, and they right. never ever use this term uh, with "aset." You feel me? Right. Right, right, right. So I just think that um, we're in a situation where um, some folks... Now, Reggie has a, a, an interesting... Uh, I don't agree with his position, right, as you can imagine. But the position that he is making is that when the Christians stole from Kemet, Kemet didn't exist anymore. They were stealing from sort of the Greco-Roman version of Kemet. But I don't think that that's a strong argument. Did they, did they take from the oldest, most authentic version of Kemet? Maybe not, but I mean, so so, the major concepts were still there, and that's where they took it from. But that's his argument. I've, I've heard him say it a few times, and I recognize, well, I don't agree with him. That's his position. But the other folks, they're just trying to say it just didn't happen. Why? Because Black people said it. You know, it's almost like Garfield has become the conscious community's um, Candace Owens, where what, she, what he does is all he does is talk about why the community sucks. That's all he does. We suck. This community is horrible. I hate how we do this. So look, if you really have such issues with us, why are you here? He's become almost like a, a noxious member of our community where all he does is say negative things about, about our community. And, and I don't get it. I don't know why. Um, you know, Dr. Clark's not an expert, but Richard Carrier is. You know, it's like, it, really? You know, um, uh, Anthony Browder is not an expert, but Richard Carrier is. I mean, I, I just don't understand why we're we're still having these conversations. And the worst thing about it, Smash, is if 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 Richard Carrier and people like him are the only experts, then I guess Sonetta should just close his channel. Well, it's really even funnier because today a guy named Jim popped up on the vocab Malone um video early and gave us a different uh take on richard carrier he described him as not cool obnoxious on the fringe different than how garfield profiled him but when we yeah. hear like you know when you go check somebody profile in their own community it's almost worth more than the person who's preventing presenting them to you as a big mm. shot you know mm. what i'm saying Y'all heard I Jim? Know. You heard that sound out of you on mute. Did you hear Jim? Man, Jim? I like Jim. Jim came in with fire, he Beat bro. the brakes off Vocab Malone. Like his energy. He came yeah. in. And yeah, he fire. said Richard Carrier is on some other stuff. Did you hear that? No, I ain't hear that part. Yeah, he was carrying. Listen to that video. But you know what? I heard somebody else say that, though. It was a brother that came in yesterday and said uh, Richard Carrier's own community denounces him on the information, you know what I'm saying? But I showed you this in the debate. Mm. Remember I showed you the slide? Maybe you didn't see the slide. Here it is, I'll put it up again. I said this in the debate. He said that I misrepresented her comments. He didn't say how. He didn't say how I misrepresented her comments. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, wait, you and sharing my screen. You sharing the wrong screen. That's my screen, so I'm not Jabari's. Here it is. Do scholars usually agree with Richard Carrier? This is Dr. Christina Peter, uh, Peterson from the, Uni the University of Newcastle, and she's reviewing his book, his magnum opus. This is his most important book. And she says, in his conclusion, Carrier trumpets that for Jesus studies, this means that all later tales of historical Jesus and his family need to be seen as legendary, mythical, and propagandistic invention and studied for their literal and rhetorical purpose, not for their specific historical content. She said, then she says about him, such a statement reveals Carrier's ignorance of the field of New Testament studies and, new Christi and early Christianity. And we should once again ask to whom he is preaching. While I will concede that the historical Jesus haunts biblical scholarship of all shapes and sizes, Carrier's response seems to come out of some parallel universe. <laughs> that is what she said. That's her, her review of him. Huh. So as he sits there and says, I'm the expert, this is what scholars do, the other folks at PhD say, oh, no, I don't think that what you're doing is scholarly. Now, I happen to agree with Richard Carrier on his position in his book. But the point is this. 
How do you situate yourself as the expert and the scholar when your peers are saying that you are not doing scholarly work? Shouldn't this mean that we should check your papers? Where's your sources, son? You can't show me a, 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 a um, cover for four books that you wrote and say those are your sources. You might say my sources are in my books, but you still have to show us the sources. So this is this is kind of ridiculous. It really is. Um, it's bizarre, um, but that's where we are. I mean, I guess I guess I shouldn't be surprised that this is where we are, um, Smash, because you know the reality is Garfield paid a hitman for me. Oh, he and, got one um, on my book right now too. He said that on the show. I have a scholar looking at your book, Smash. Oh. It's all good. And so I'm like, look, I, that really is all good, but don't do that like you, um, like, I'm going to survive that. And my work right. is cool. But I'm like, right. you're not front like you, my folks, or family, if you paying white people to try to discredit me, bro. Yes. Yes. And then when the white boy come, when the white guy comes, I'm going to call him white boy, when the scholar comes, to be fair to him, and he loses did you think they were going to say, oh, man, he lost? I mean, what, what did you? <laughs> I didn't think that. I knew what it was going to be going down just like this. I mean, I oh, ain't even dry hating. Y'all see how much hate I've been getting. The, now it's a new Smash Rockwell hate train. Oh. First, first it was just a Jabari hate train. Now it's a Smash Rockwell hate oh, train. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy, Smash. It's crazy. I ain't mad though. They didn't know how built for. I'm. I, I know you are too. But I. I kind of like went through my earlier life looking for conflicts. I wasn't <laughs> no bully. I was looking for people to take up for. People stood behind me in the club. Like, I wish not the one. would. Right? Yeah. You, I mean. So. I mean. I told Garfield, your your shoulders way too close to your head to even be talking crazy to me like that. Like you, we could see you not built like that through the computer. You know what? what I'm saying? But I mean, you know, I ain't I ain't about to turn up. But <laughs> he's been targeting me and I'm not a good target, bro. I'm a better yeah, ally. I, I'm a very good friend and ally. I'm not a good enemy. I saw I saw on the on his slide that he had me, you, and Shaka. It's so bizarre. How'd you stick Shaka in there? He's Shaka going about his business quiet somewhere. How did exactly. you what? Exactly. It's crazy. I don't know. But this is this is where we're at. This is where we're at. So, Sonetta, what are we doing? Um, it, it's getting late. That's why I'm saying that's almost 12 o'clock. Yes, it, sir. Um, yes sir. Is, uh, what do you call it? it oh, I'm sorry. Brother Rock, Rock Kufu wants to say something. Please yeah, go ahead, Kufu. Okay, I just want a piece of the family. Um, I just wanted to ask Jabari, are you ever going to write a priestly book? Yeah, I've been asked that question like 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> and the answer has to be yes. I just have not had the bandwidth. I'm doing so many things at the same time. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna stick I'm gonna stick with Raul Nefer's meditations yeah. right now. Heart of prayer, <laughs> heart of prayer, right? Oh Raul Nefer's um uh Medunetter. Yeah, his, yeah, his, 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 his meditation. Like, I love the meditations, yeah. the breathing techniques and all. I wish we yeah. were, we had yeah. Man. Yeah, of course, of course. And, you know, I started at a Sarasat Society, so I know exactly what you're talking about. So, yeah. So, definitely, I just, you know, it, it's, there are, I part of this hate is because I'm a practitioner, you know? And I don't come on here as a practitioner. I really have not come on here as a practitioner. Sonetter has filmed my ceremonies and when we're, when our initiates are going through. But mm -hmm. that's the only time you see me as a, as a practitioner. I come on here to talk about history. And and I still get hate. Part of it is because some of them would like to believe that they're atheists, and so you know they're they're attacking anyone that has any spiritual tradition, which is which is kind of ridiculous. So I don't know. I All mean, right. I, before, I, before we get out, let me make y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we get out, let, I uh, wanted to make a last, last the contribution. Hold on, smash, hold, on, smash, hold on, smash, hold on, smash for one minute. I want everybody to know it's going down. All right, January the sixth. Before I put it in the crates, you don't want to miss it. If you missed it. That's on you. Can y'all, can my moderators throw the link in the chat once again, y'all? Once again. It's if, a replay, right? Yes, it's a replay. Yeah. It's a replay. If you missed it, that's why I said if you missed it, we're doing it again before I put it in the crates. So come on and see it. It's going down January the 6th. Yeah. January the 6th. Come on and uh, check it out. So yeah. that you can get a better idea of who won, who lost, and you know, you have a different take on everything. Right. 
All right. right. So, Smash, you got the floor, brother. Oh, I just want to be real brief. Let me show it, though. So as me and Reggie start to probe when this conversation first came up, we dived into the text. I'm using the TLA here. And what we started doing was to look at which Netcheru actually have accounts of having sex and all and, and are, are, are deflowering another Netcher or Netcheru. And it did not come down to any major Netcheru, but what we did find is Horus who deflowered minor Neturu, who be, they were these seven scorpions who were the maidens of Aset, who at a later time became the wives of Heru. And as we can see on the, on the screen here from a, a snake magical new kingdom uh, spell in Cairo, we can read with the blood of Tabichet after Horus deflowered her in the evening. Now he also deflowered uh, Sepertunes, uh, Sepin Nesta, right? It says, uh, come, come forth from the earth. Oh, come from the earth according to the word of Sepper Tunes, Sepin Nesta, the first daughter of Ra, because she revealed that her, her name to, she revealed her name to Horus during after three years, and the blood was hidden on her thighs after mm. Horus had deflowered her. Now, mm. this is very key because this is a minor deity, and they're letting us know that, look, she has been deflowered. So I'm saying if this had occurred, and I argued this with Reggie, if this had occurred with a deity as major as I said, it would be written somewhere that she has been deflowered, but we did not find that text, so I just wanted to put that forward. Shout out for having me on. Again, good win, Jabari. And um, I've been forced to support your work only because you've been one of the writers on the show. Look, you the GOAT and I'm the BOAT. You the greatest and I'm the best. The greatest of all times and the best of all times, you know what I'm talking about? And that's what it is. I'm going I'm to leave it on that note. Shout out to y'all. Peace. I'm out of here. Thanks again, man. All right. Peace and black power. Well, all right, we out of here, man. Sorry, yeah. Noble King. Sorry, Noble King. You came in a little late. We got to be out. So, yeah. Um, thank you, Brother Jabari. Close us out yeah. real quick. Close us yeah, out. Yeah, let me just say, folks, listen, um, we have to continue to do work, right? We have to continue to do the research. And remember that if we are at the point where we're trying to learn uh, more about our history, we can't let people tell us that folks can come in here and just tell us things without supporting what they're saying and that they should be seen as experts. And none of us who have been studying for decades are experts. I mean, that's kind of what um, what uh, we've been told. And we have to not allow people to say those sorts of things. Um, it is destructive to our the communities that we've built. It's destructive. If, if Richard Carey is the only type of person that can be an expert, then why is Garfield speaking? Why is Ankh speaking? None of them should be able to speak then if that's the case. Show your credentials. By the way, my credentials will stand up to anyone's, mm -hmm. anyone's. So, you know, that's the that's the challenge that we have. And we, we should recognize that if we're doing study, we should be able to speak about our study, regardless of what kind of degree you have, regardless of your degree. You should, if you are studying, if you are focused on this, you should be able to discuss what you're learning and debate what you're learning. Folks, I want you to know that um, in 2024, there's going to be a lot more going on. Um, you're going to see our trips to Africa. Please make sure that you're on board um, uh, and getting ready to give your deposits to go. Um, you're going to see muse more museum tours. I'm even going to, Sonetta needs to come into my classes and record me teaching. I'm going to bring him in so he can see some of my classes at, at Hunter College as well. Whenever you want me, I'm ready, man. Hey, yeah. hey, hey Jabari, I think we need to do it debate at Hunter College, brother. I think that I might be able to get access to that space for it. Let's day. do it, man. Let's do it. Y'all got a big auditorium, right? There are a few. Man, let's do it, man. There I'm ready. I'm ready to set yeah. something up. If, um, I ain't going to say who I'm going to get, but um, is, a, is another top dog. And you should also understand that I have also, you know, one of the things I was doing over the last few weeks is applying to some really uh, powerful history programs. So I will have a PhD in history. When Dr. Turner, my one of my Jegnas, one of the people that put all the energy into me, passed away, he said to me before he passed, I don't know why you didn't go get your doctorate in history. I will help you. And then he died. Mm. And it was at that point I said, what am I doing? I have to do this. Right. 
And so that's why I went back for the uh, the additional master's degree in the history of Africa and the African diaspora at the Chichester. And guess what? The sad thing, though, Jabari, and I'm glad we ain't counting on them to tell us who are who the real teachers are. The sad thing is that they still won't respect your information. No. Show you how much of a hypocrite they are. Even when you get your PhD, they still not gonna recognize you as that because they're of their jealousy. And I've applied to they some really feminine ways. Hey, Garfield really have feminine ways, brother. Oh, don't say that because you insult oh, women, brother. I'm gonna say it. But you're insulting women. Women don't do this crazy. Oh, now. oh, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> But he really act girly to me, man. I don't know no. and do the stuff. I would say like, man. childish, you mean childish. She's acting childish. Well, I'm saying girly, man. That's my words for it, man. <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. This dude act too. No, I mean, I grew up with, with the um older brothers, older than me, man. I've been yeah. in the streets, man, for a while before I became conscious, brother. I ain't seen no men like these dudes over here, man, for real. This is where I get my mental strength from. Right. Being out there on the 125th Street, faced with them there, hundreds of personalities a day. That You used to walk by, Jabari, yes. and you would see the crowd out there. You see me going in. I know many times you probably walk by and say, this fool is crazy right here. A few times I would tap you on the back and say, what's up, and keep moving. Yeah. I, don't know if um, you remember that. I did that a few times to I you. Don't remember that. I really no, don't, brother. You really knew who I was. So yeah, yeah I will have you on the back. Yeah, that's what it was. But yeah, it was, it was it was powerful. You know, I mean, you know, and you know, to be able to develop these bona fides, let's call it, to develop these abilities, these schools, they came out of uh, of um the fire. You know what I mean? So it's, I'm not going to be um shook by what they're saying. And I'm not shook by PhDs, European PhDs, because I had to fight with them. For, for decades. I mean, that, that I don't get shook by that. I'm going to still ask you for your sources. Mm -hmm. I'm going to not ask for sources and believe what you're saying simply because you said it. Are you crazy? All wow. right, brother. So with that, peace to you, brother. Yeah, with that, peace, family. I'm glad that I was able to talk to you. We'll speak soon. All right. So peace out. Go forth in peace. You are nothing to me, sign editor. You are nothing to me, sign editor. You a nigga whose platform I use to raise some bread and to bring some fucking notoriety to what I'm doing. I'm gonna be straight. Damn!